I'm Howard Kaufman. I'm a professor at Rutgers University, and I'm here today to talk about changes in the landscape for Merkel cell carcinoma. For those of you who don't know what Merkel cell is, it's a rare but aggressive form of skin cancer that was originally described as a neuroendocrine tumor of the skin. The cell of origin for Merkel cells appear to be a proprioceptive cell within the skin, although there is some controversy about the exact cell of origin. Merkel cells are not common tumors. There's only about 2,000 cases in the United States each year, but the incidence has been increasing slowly over the last two decades. We generally use a mnemonic called AEIOU to describe the risk factors for Merkel cell. Many of these lesions are A, asymptomatic. These typically will appear as flesh or pink colored lesions either within the skin or the soft tissues. Sometimes this will appear in a lymph node and there is no cutaneous component found. Most of these lesions though are not tender. Uh, they can be a little pruritic, they can bleed sometimes, but mostly they're, they're purely asymptomatic. However, many Merkel cells will exhibit the E feature, which is expansion. So these tumors will expand relatively quickly and this is when they often come to clinical detection. They're often misdiagnosed as other types of lesions, and the only way to make a definitive diagnosis is through biopsy. The I in the AEIOU mnemonic stands for immune suppression. So these tumors are more common in patients who might be immunosuppressed. For example, transplant patients need to be watched a bit more closely for the development of Merkel cell. Uh, the O stands for older. Most of these tumors will occur in, in patients over the age of 50, although there have been reports of Merkel cell in children and adolescents, so it, it can occur in that age range. But the typical presentation is, is in the elderly population. And the U stands for ultraviolet exposure. So sun exposure is clearly related to uh, the development of Merkel cell carcinomas. In the early stage, we typically will treat, mel uh, treat Merkel cell similar to melanoma in that we will do a wide local excision with the sentinel node biopsy and for advanced tumors we'll add in adjuvant radiation to the tumor bed or the lymph node basin. Once the disease becomes metastatic it can be a real problem and the typical life expectancy historically for metastatic Merkel cell has generally been less than one year. Although the tumor is responsive to carboplatin and cisplatin based chemotherapy with response rates of generally around 50%, long-term survival with chemotherapy uh, is very rare. And uh, to date, uh, until previously, there were no approved FDA therapies for this disease. Recently, there is a new approval, and this was based on the Javelin Merkel 200 clinical trial. This was a study which targeted a molecule called program cell death ligand 1, or PDL1. So PDL1 is a molecule that is expressed by some tumor cells, and we've seen it in a, almost all Merkel cell uh, tumor microenvironments, sometimes on the tumor cells themselves and sometimes on the infiltrating macrophages and other cells uh, that can be in the tumor microenvironment. What PDL1 does is it binds to its ligand, which is called PD1, on the surface of T cells, and it tends to kill the T cells. So if the immune system can respond to the Merkel cell, uh, PDL1 provides a mechanism to allow the tumor to keep growing and to avoid immune detection. So an antibody that targets the PDL1 called Avelumab was developed and was tested in patients who had chemotherapy refractory metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma. 88 patients were enrolled in this study and overall there was a 33 percent objective response rate and 74% of the patients who had responses remained in response uh, for more than six months. Based on this data and the lack of effective therapies for this disease, Avelumab was approved by the FDA in March of 2017. The Javelin study has now been extended to look at patients who have chemotherapy naive disease and these patients are now being enrolled in an ongoing clinical trial. A few of the patients uh, have been enrolled and some of the early data is actually being reported at ASCO in 2017 and it looks like the response rate in the small cohort of patients is 62.5 percent. And this is similar to data that was reported in a study of pembrolizumab which is an antibody that targets the PD-1 receptor in which a 56 percent response rate was seen in patients who had metastatic Merkel cell who had not yet received chemotherapy. 
These data are really changing the clinical uh, paradigm for Merkel cell carcinoma, and it seems that patients um, who have Merkel cell in the metastatic setting should get access to uh, one of the PD-1 or PD-L1 therapies. The Velimab right now is the only one that is approved by the FDA, and this approval includes patients who have had previous chemotherapy and those patients who have not had chemotherapy yet. The Avelumab is given as an intravenous infusion. It's a 10 milligram per kilogram dose, and it's given every two weeks. Patients can stay on treatment until they've had a maximal response, uh, if they've had clear evidence of disease progression, or if there's unacceptable toxicity. The main toxicities that have been seen with this drug include fatigue and infusion-like reactions. Because of the infusion reactions, it's generally recommended that patients receive premedication with Tylenol and an antihistamine at least for the first four doses. And if there hasn't been a problem, then it may be okay to uh, eliminate the, the premedications from subsequent treatment. There have been a small number of immune-related adverse events that have been reported with the Velimab, but this rate has generally been low and managed with corticosteroids, similar to how we would manage patients uh, being treated with other T-cell checkpoint inhibitors. I think the future for Merkel cell looks quite bright. These response rates that we're seeing are very high, so I think it's important to recognize that this is available for patients uh, now. And I think the future will likely include studies of combination therapies now that we understand that Merkel cell is in fact responsive to immunotherapy, the uh, potential to combine it with other immunotherapy agents such as oncolytic viruses, uh, CTLA, anti-CTLA-4 uh, are important and many of these trials are currently ongoing or, or nearing completion. Another thing that's unique about Merkel cell carcinoma is that many of the um, cancers are associated with a virus called the Merkel cell polyoma virus. And in the Javelin trial, although we looked for the Merkel cell uh, polyomavirus status, it had no correlation with response, suggesting that although this is an interesting feature of the, of the tumor, it doesn't necessarily have any implication for likelihood of response. There are studies that are looking at vaccines or adoptive T cells that are targeting the polyomavirus, and these uh, remain experimental but may be of interest uh, in the future. So in summary, Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare but aggressive form of skin cancer. In patients who develop metastatic disease, Avelumab is now approved by the FDA for treatment in both first and second line therapy. It, treatment is generally well tolerated and uh, future studies will likely include combinations and Avelumab will likely be tested in the adjuvant setting. I thank you for your attention.